William Golding uses the character of Piggy to represent rationality and science. Piggy is by far the most intelligent boy in the group, yet he is treated terribly by the other boys. In this video, we'll look at why. Just as we did with the character of Simon, let's start by looking at Golding's physical description of Piggy in the opening chapter of the novel. The owner of the voice came backing out of the undergrowth so that twigs scratched on a greasy windbreaker. The naked crooks of his knees were plump, caught and scratched by thorns. He bent down, removed the thorns carefully and turned around. He was shorter than the fair boy and very fat. He came forward searching out safe lodgements for his feet and then looked up through thick spectacles. The adjectives used to describe Piggy, greasy, plump, very fat, with thick spectacles, makes the character stand out in stark contrast to the athletically built Ralph. This contrast is all the more striking given Golding's structural decision to start the novel with these two characters alone for enough time to allow the reader to make judgments based on them. As well as the physical contrast between Piggy and Ralph, there's a class-based contrast too. The other boys mock the way Piggy pronounces asthma, and Piggy alone often speaks in non-standard English. What's grown-ups going to think, he asks in chapter 5, rather than the standard English, what are grown-ups going to think? Not only do others view Piggy as socially inferior, he views himself this way in comparison to the other boys too. When Piggy first encounters Jack in the opening chapter, we learn that he was intimidated by this uniformed superiority and the offhand authority in Merridew's voice. Whilst Ralph and Jack brim with inbuilt confidence, Piggy is the opposite. Virginia Tiger comments on this further in her analytical work, William Golding, The Dark Fields of Discovery, from 1974. Lower middle class Piggy, with his auntie's sweet shop as signifying the then despised tradesman class, as do the dropped H's in the lad's speeches, is derided. Tiger is right, Piggy is derided, but clearly he does not deserve such treatment. Instantly judged on his physical appearance and manner of speaking, Piggy is actually the most intelligent character in the novel. He is used by Golding to represent rationality in science. Life, said Piggy expansively, is scientific. That's what it is. Let's take a look at some of the intelligent things Piggy says and does. I expect we'll want to know their names. We ought to have a meeting. That's chapter one. Here we see Piggy's intelligence as he realises the best way to organise the boys. This is an island. Nobody don't know we're here. Here Piggy quickly grasps the reality of the situation. Even the narrator says it. What intelligence had been shown was traceable to Piggy. Piggy discounted all this learnedly as a mirage. That's a chapter four reference to the sea floating into the middle of the sky at midday. I've been thinking, he said, about a clock. We could make a sundial. Chapter four. I know about people. I know about me and him. He can't hurt you. But if you stand out of the way, he'd hurt the next thing, and that's me. That's chapter 5. Piggy is intelligent and an astute judge of character, but very few of the other boys seem to realise it. In Golding's biography, the author John Carey writes that Golding had a sense of social inadequacy that dogged him all his life. He always felt intimidated, he said, by top-draw Englishmen. In this light, we can view Piggy as a criticism of social inadequacy. However, Piggy's not presented by Golding as an innocent victim. There are limits to his goodness. For one, Piggy has an irrational trust in adults. As the boy's behaviour becomes more and more uncivilised in Chapter 5, Piggy asks, what are we? Humans or animals or savages? What's grown-ups going to think? This quotation is significant because what Piggy fails to realise is that the grown-ups of the outside world are engaged in a savagery of their own through nuclear war. Piggy's scientific approach to life doesn't always work out either. When Simon is murdered, we read of Piggy that he was gesticulating, searching for a formula. That's chapter 10. Piggy tries to make everything fit into his scientific, rational approach, but that simply isn't possible. His approach is as flawed as that of Ralph, who suggested taking a democratic vote on the existence of ghosts. Piggy regularly gets things wrong because of his rational approach. In chapter 10, he assumes the tribe is coming to attack to take the conch, when the reality is they're coming for his glasses. I thought they wanted the conch, he says. The idea that Jack's tribe would be interested in the conch is ridiculous. It holds no significance to them now. 
Piggy fails to understand people because he sees things in rational terms, but humans do not always behave rationally. If Piggy can be seen as a symbol of science, then what message do we learn through him? Rachel Horgrood Reef suggests that Piggy's belief that science can explain everything makes him unable to comprehend the reality of the beast. That's taken from William Golding, Lord of the Flies, Rachel Horgrood Reef, 2005. This inability to understand things beyond the rational scientific realm is seen in the way that Piggy completely fails to understand Simon, the representative of spirituality. In chapter 10, Piggy says of Simon, he was batty. Patrick Riley comments that Piggy's chief handicap is un- his unfounded trust in a rational universe administered by a rational man. He is used to represent a naive and potentially disastrous faith in science. That's taken from Patrick Riley's Lord of the Flies, Father and Sons, 1992. To Piggy, everything must have a rational explanation, and Golding's point is that it's impossible to explain everything rationally because humanity does not behave rationally. Again, this brings us back to the author's overarching theme of the innate evil in humanity. 